Cause y'all always talking about these rappers, always talking about and giving y'all these all these stupid, stupid talks. Oh, this God bless it. What God wants you to do? No, this not what God wants you to do. You go through all this. The devil give you all this money. Go through all this to destroy yourself. I had to take a ride. I had to take a ride, bro. Get out my house. Cause the demons are trying to attack me, bro. Like it's 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 been it's bad. Like I never cry, bro. I never f cry. I never f cry. I never. I never. I never. I never. I never. I never. I never f cry. I swear to God, right on the Bible. I'm so strong. I just never cry. Child, not why Ko Cyrus filing a fifty million dollar lawsuit against Diddy and Drake for allegedly essaying him for years. Diddy has been having a rough time in the past couple of weeks, but it looks like more and more people in the industry have been coming out to expose Diddy's dark secrets. But Osiris' lawsuit has to be one of the worst ones so far because not only did they allegedly SA him, but then they got him blacklisted from the industry. Diddy is going broke from all these lawsuits and it looks like he just might be about to file for bankruptcy anytime soon. Y'all need to get on this drama because it is giving. I just wanna die. That's what I wanna do. I wanna die. That's what I wanna do. I wanna just crash out right now and just like, like this, this, this like life. I swear to God. Okay, so it looks like we are finally in that part of the Surviving Diddy series where people in the industry are speaking up against him and bringing some pretty convincing evidence about how he allegedly essayed them and ruined their lives. Rapper YK Osiris is the first of many to speak up because not only is he exposing Diddy, but he has also dragged Drake into it and he's asking for $50 million as damages. A couple of days ago, there was a blind item going around about how more people, especially men, were expected to come out and expose Diddy for allegedly essaying them. Diddy is on his fourth lawsuit for abuse, assault, among other things, in the past recent weeks. And there have been blind items and rumors that he has abused and assaulted men as well. Here is a new blind item. I suspect the soon to step forward male victim of SA by this A-list mogul will not be the last man to do so. And again, this is allegedly Sean Diddy Combs. But I don't think anybody expected it to happen so fast. And y'all, the claims that Osiris is making are disturbing to say the very least. But when you actually sit down and think about it, it isn't all that shocking because the truth has been right in front of our eyes the entire time. And we're only now realizing just how messed up things are because Diddy and Drake have been allegedly taking advantage of Osiris in public for a while. But we never really put two and two together to realize what was going on. See, there have been rumors for a while now about Osiris being Diddy's boy toy and play thing and people were straight up asking if they were sneaking around together and playing hanky panky because the situation between the both of them just had this weird vibe. Osiris first got into the industry in 2018 after he released his hit song Valentine that went platinum and he was signed by Def Jam Records. He released one album under the label but the album didn't perform so well and he was dropped in 2022. But in the years that he was signed to the label he made good use of the networking opportunities that were available to him and he soon became good friends with Diddy and Drake. After he got dropped by Def Jam, he continued to maintain a close relationship with both Diddy and Drake, but things started to get suspicious when he took a trip alone with Diddy to Jamaica. Men taking trips together isn't a big deal because it happens all the time and it doesn't always mean that something zesty is going on. But in this case, fans were convinced that there was more to the trip than met the eye because everything about it screamed zesty. For example, when Diddy posted this shirtless picture of himself in the ocean, Osiris reposted the picture on his Instagram stories with grateful emojis, leaving people to wonder what exactly he was grateful for. He also made this post in the lead of him and Diddy getting a couple's massage by the sea. And there's no way y'all can't tell me that you don't find that sus. He also wrote, listening to that Diddy in B2K, eating that good fruit in the beautiful weather. Uh, what? But that wasn't all because he also posted this photo and fans believe that Diddy was feeding him grapes behind the scenes. Chow, it was like they was on a honeymoon or something. Also, it was clear that Diddy was the one who financed this luxury trip because Osiris was broke AF at the time. A couple of months before the trip, he revealed that he was broke and had sold off some of his cars and other pricey items that he had just so he could get by. Fans were super convinced at this point that there was something weird going on between him and Diddy and this person said, I thought this kid was gonna blow. He had some bops when he first came on the scene. Then it was like, unless you followed him, you really didn't hear much about him. Now, all of a sudden, he's popping up more. I'm really starting to believe that any black guy that stays in these social circles, especially around Diddy's disgusting self, or are being by men in the industry. Those who fall out or don't be in those circles refuse to bend. 
It is sick. So people had their suspicions that something bad was going on, but we didn't know just how bad it was. The situation got weirder when Osiris's ex-girlfriend revealed that she had dumped him because she had allegedly found him in bed with a man, saying, stop asking me what happened with my BD. I caught him with a man, okay? Fingers immediately started pointing at Diddy, and when Osiris went on The Breakfast Club, they asked him about the rumors. They said that he said he was Diddy's boy toy. Uh, what? Yeah, I was in Jamaica with him. I was uh, with a shawty. All right, but Diddy was there. No, he was a whole other different. Oh, so they just made this up? Yeah, they made it up, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, he was in a whole other different area. Osiris denying that he was with Diddy in Jamaica didn't make no sense because he posted pictures on Instagram about how they were together. He even reposted Diddy's picture on his Instagram stories, but all of a sudden, he was trying to deny that they were together. It didn't add up, and fans started wondering if a certain someone had told him to lie if he was asked about it. But it wasn't only his relationship with Diddy that got the side eye, because his relationship with Drake also got people wondering what was going on, especially because it seemed like Drake seemed to love humiliating Osiris on social media for the world to see. For example, back in 2021, Drake made Osiris perform a song to get out of a $60,000 gambling debt that he owed to Drake. You owe me 60 bands? Or, and you have to perform the song right now in the crib. What are we talking about? What are you talking about? I'm giving you an out. I'm not baby, I'm not boosty. You don't owe me no two rags, five rags. You owe me 60 bands? I'm playing the song right now, you ready? I need you, I need a full performance. No huh? You won't owe me no money right now. I swear, I need a full performance oh. though. The real oh. shit though. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm serious. You just got it, anyway. <laughs> Drake's reaction, as well as the fact that everybody else was laughing at him, kind of made us feel like Drake was clowning him. However, Osiris defended Drake, claiming that he had no ill intention. Remember um, with Drake, remember you had to sing for Drake? No, nah, but Drake, Drake, my brother though, like that's that's my boy. So it's like when we bet and gamble, like it's, it's really ain't about no money. It's really about this fun. But Osiris was clearly trying to save face because, as it turns out, Drake was not the only one who clowned and humiliated him. In another video, Osiris was sitting on the floor of Drake's private jet doing sit-ups while Drake's artist Baca mocked him. You struggling? You struggling with them push-ups? From the look on Osiris's face, he was not having a good time, and he looked kind of humiliated. But that's not all, because y'all remember when Drake forced Osiris to get the same haircut as him, and he posted the picture on his Instagram story saying, burnt the F out. You really one of one at YK Osiris. He also got a tattoo of Drake's label, OVO. But to no one's surprise, his friendship with Drake turned out to be fake and didn't last very long. And last year, Osiris went on a rant on Instagram about how frustrated he was and how he wanted to unalive himself. I just wanna die. That's what I wanna do. I wanna die. That's what I wanna do. I wanna just crash out right now and just like, like this, this, this like life. I swear to God. He also claimed that Drake was no longer talking to him and he had no friends left in the industry. Y'all keep using that Drake, huh? Drake don't me either. Me and Drake don't talk. Me, me and the baby don't talk. Nobody in the industry f Osiris. Nobody, so don't keep using that at the time, people wondered what exactly was going on, and some people even mocked him for getting so worked up over a friendship ending. But then, he went live to reveal that there were some dark things going on in the industry that a lot of people don't even know about. It's a blessing from the devil, so stop saying that it's a God blessing. Because y'all always talking about these rappers, always talking about and giving y'all all these, all these stupid, stupid, Talks. Oh, this God bless it. What God wants you to do. No, this is not what God wants you to do. You go through all this. The devil give you all this money. Go through all to destroy yourself. You, 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 you destroy yourself. This is not God blessing. My that was just messed up on so many levels, and knowing what we know now, well, the streets are saying that the reason Osiris got so worked up is that he allegedly got essayed by Diddy and Drake as part of a weird Hollywood ritual where they allegedly essay young boys. Diddy, in particular, has been hit with allegations of essaying young boys in the industry. Back in 2013, we found out that he was being investigated by federal agencies for engaging in an improper relationship with young boys. Reports had it that during a debriefing session with federal investigators, James Roseman, the music manager turned cocaine king, 
Kingpin, was reportedly questioned about the sexual preferences of entertainers, including whether Sean Diddy Combs was having intimate relationships with underage boys, according to the U.S. District Court filing. A prosecutor then asked about entertainers' intimate preferences, including, but not only, Sean Combs having intimate relations with underage boys. There's also this blind item that said that Diddy allegedly gave Usher herpes when he was a teenager, and that Kim Porter was going to talk about it in her book before she passed away. So what was in Kim's book? You want to hear it? Here it go. Now, I cannot confirm or deny what's in this book, but ain't nobody fit Natasha K. Me. So in this book, it detailed his relationships with men, footage of those encounters. It had the names of the men he slept with, a disease. Allegedly, did he give an usher a disease? There are also reports that Diddy allegedly did something to Justin Bieber when he said this. 48 hours. Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose. Then there's this video where Justin was clearly uncomfortable next to Diddy, but Diddy either didn't get the drift or he just didn't care. What's up, man? You good? I'm good. How are you? All right, young brother. Everything's good? Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything? Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't, I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got, got my number, so. You're right. This is all very, very weird. And people are now saying that Diddy and Drake's alleged mistreatment of Osiris, as well as the alleged essay, kind of explains why Osiris has been acting out because he is traumatized. Well, not only is Osiris coming out to tell his story, but the streets are saying that he is already speaking to some lawyers about filing a lawsuit against Diddy. And get this, he's not just speaking to a random lawyer because people are saying that he is speaking to the same lawyers that handled Cassie's lawsuits, as well as the Jane Doe who sued Diddy last week for allegedly essaying her when she was 17. If the rumors are true, it looks like Diddy is gonna have some very tough times ahead because if there is one thing about Cassie's lawyers, it's that they don't play around and they mean business. It's unclear how much Osiris is asking for, but various sources said that he's suing for about $50 million. And that kind of makes me wonder if he has some major dirt on Diddy and Drake that we don't know about because $50 million is a lot of money. Plus, it's unclear if Diddy is gonna be able to afford that money because according to the streets, Diddy is slowly getting broker and broker by the day. The lawsuits that he's been facing have been draining him financially in more ways than one. Apart from the part where he's been settling lawsuits left and right, there are also reports that he has allegedly been paying people off who have been making threats to sue him. Allegedly, many more people have some serious dirt on Diddy that could land him in some serious trouble, which may end in him facing criminal charges instead of civil lawsuits that he's been battling. So he has been paying heavily for people to keep their mouths shut. Chow, it looks like those Hollywood Woody Leach finally caught up with Diddy and they have him right where they want him. In case y'all somehow missed the T on this, there have been rumors that the reason Diddy is going through all this is that he fell out of favor with the Hollywood elites and they're trying to teach him a lesson. It's unclear what happened or why, but one thing is clear. This is coming from the higher ups. I mean, think about it. People in Hollywood have known about Diddy and his behavior for years, but all of a sudden, everyone has an issue and they're distancing themselves from him. Yeah, y'all best believe that the order came from someone above because they're trying to ruin Diddy. And the first step to do that is to take away his main source of power, which is his money. Well, it's clearly worked because word on the street is that he's bleeding money and losing endorsements quicker than you can blink. Investors are bailing on him, business partners are jumping ship, and his whole situation is a hot mess. He has spent a lot of money on lawsuits in the past month or so. I mean, just look at Cassie. Rumor has it, she walked away with $100 million from him. That's the kind of money that'll take a serious toll on your net worth no matter how rich you are. I mean, we've seen this sort of thing happen a couple of times, with Kanye West being the most recent victim. Last year, Kanye West went from a net worth of about about 3.2 billion to about 400 million dollars in the blink of an eye. This happened after the whole anti-Semitic situation where he was accused of hating Jews and being offensive. It was a really wild ride because many companies cut ties with him, brands ended their partnerships, and he lost a lot of money. And even though it has been more than a year since and Kanye has been working on some really cool stuff, he still hasn't been able to financially recover from that. I'm not saying that he's broke, but he's definitely no longer a billionaire. The same thing is happening to Diddy, but in this case, 
he's not exactly as lucky as Kanye. See, Kanye had a lot of diehard fans who fought for him and showed up for him, but Diddy's fans aren't exactly that loyal. He doesn't have Kanye's strong fan base, and to make it worse, he's been getting a ton of bad press for a while now, so his popularity isn't as strong as it was in the 90s and early 2000s. I mean, sure, he's got some fans who are defending him, but the nature of his allegations makes it hard for even his strongest fan to speak up in his defense or support. Anybody who supports him is pretty much guaranteed to get dragged on social media, so we've seen very few people speaking up for him. Even industry folks are doing the whole social distancing thing away from him because they see the writing on the wall. Diddy's on a one-way ticket downhill and it's a free fall with no parachute. Not one person from the industry has spoken up for him and that's to tell you how bad it is because even R. Kelly had people from the industry at least try to make excuses for him and his bad behavior. Again, this shows that whatever is happening to Diddy is coming from way higher than we expected and they are out to cripple him and take him down. Now before y'all come up with that talk about how Diddy is a billionaire and it's gonna take a lot for him to blow through a billion dollars, let me remind you that just because his net worth is a billion doesn't mean that he has a billion dollars in hard cash lying around or stuck in a bank account or something. See, experts typically recommend that you should only keep between 2 and 10% of your net worth in cash or near cash equivalent that can quickly turn into cash. So if Diddy's a billionaire, that translates to about 20 million to 100 million dollars in liquid zone. Now here's the kicker, he reportedly dropped a sweet 100 million dollars on on Cassie. You do the math and you'll see the numbers don't exactly add up in his favor, especially when you throw in all these lawsuits, legal fees, and the cash he's shelling out to his PR team to clean up the mess. And let's not forget, the rest of his net worth is directly tied to the success of his businesses. It's like a financial seesaw. If his businesses and financial ventures hit a rough patch, so does his net worth. Considering the fact that his investors and partners are pulling the plug on their partnership with Diddy's businesses quicker than you can blink, well, let's just say that Diddy can go go ahead and add financial worries to that very long list of things that he is currently dealing with. And the money flow is more like a leaky faucet at this point. With all this, it's not shocking that the streets are now saying that he is quickly moving towards being broke. And not just broke, he's heading for bankruptcy and he is heading toward it fast. Even before the latest lawsuit accusing him of some seriously messed up stuff with a minor, businesses were already packing up and losing faith in him. It all started hitting the fan after the first three lawsuits dropped. And honestly, it's no shocker that he got the boot. I mean, the stuff that surfaced about him was wild, like out of this world wild. Who would want their brand tangled up in that mess? Businesses were quick to distance themselves, and it's hard not to blame them. Cassie's lawsuit kickstarted the process, making some shocking revelations and claiming that Diddy allegedly essayed Miss Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Miss Ventura, resulting in bruises, burst lips, black eyes, and bleeding, forced Miss Ventura to engage in intimate acts with male SWs while getting off on it and filming the encounters, demanded that Miss Ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, and introduced Miss Ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse, and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addiction. She also went into detail about how Diddy allegedly put paws on her during their 11-year relationship and how she felt like a prisoner in the relationship. He also told her under his control and every time she tried to escape, he would allegedly send people to threaten her into coming back to him. She also revealed that she would allegedly get her high on drugs, SA her, and then pimp her out to male escorts in what he called freak offs. The other lawsuits were just as bad because the second woman, Joy Dickerson Neal, claimed that Diddy allegedly essayed her after he drugged her while they were on a date. According to reports, the complaint alleges Combs intentionally drugged Dickerson Neal, leaving her unable to stand or walk. The suit said she left her drink unattended with him at the restaurant and afterward, under alleged pressure from Combs, she took a hit from a blunt. They then drove to a music studio, the suit stated. When Dickerson Neal couldn't exit the car, Combs allegedly took her to a place he was staying to essay her, according to the filing. Even worse, she revealed in the lawsuit that Diddy had made a video of him essaying her and he shared it around. Reports added that days later, a male friend named Devontae Swing, a member of the popular 90s R&B group Jodeci, revealed to Joy that he viewed an adult tape along with other people, according to the suit. Joy said Swing feared his band would lose its record deal if he spoke against Combs. The third woman filed anonymously and claimed that she and her friend were allegedly essayed by Diddy and singer Aaron Hall. According to reports, while at Hall's apartment, Jane Doe was offered more drinks and was coerced into being intimate with Combs. After Combs finished doing his business, Jane Doe laid in bed shocked and traumatized. While Jane Doe was trying to get dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Jane Doe to be intimate with him. But it was worse than that because according to reports, Diddy and Aaron then took turns to essay her friend at the same time. It gets even worse 
because days later, Combs went to the home where Jane Doe and her friend were staying, became irate, and allegedly assaulted and choked Jane Doe until she passed out. Combs was allegedly looking for the friend because he feared she would tell the girl he was with at the time. Did he deny the accusation? And he had his lawyers issue a statement on his behalf saying, because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. The New York legislature surely did not intend or expect the Adult Survivors Act to be exploited by scammers. The public should be skeptical and not rush to accept these bogus allegations. Joy and Jane Doe's lawsuits were the tipping point for many of the brands that Diddy was affiliated with, and they started dropping him one after the other. Macy's was the first brand to drop him, and they released a statement saying, as part of our ongoing review of our brand portfolio, the Sean John collection has started to phase out of assortment since early fall 2023. Diddy's products are being removed and won't be available on the site. It's the course of business. Retail stores are always evaluating and deciding what's relevant to consumers. Macy tried to claim that they had been planning to drop his brand for a while, but people didn't buy this. The tequila brand, Daggio, announced that they were taking legal steps to end their partnership with Diddy. Diddy and the brand had been in and out of court for a while now, and they are taking this opportunity to officially kick him out. In their court documents, they said, the new public and disturbing accusations against him risk devastating and permanent damage to the tequila brand. And considering that a good chunk of Diddy's net worth and income is tied to his stock in Ciroc and De Leon, yeah, let's just say that this is gonna hit him hard. Things started to get worse because even the Grammys are making moves to ban him from the ceremony next year because he was just bad for publicity. According to the Daily Mirror, Several Academy officials are pushing to remove the billionaire superstar from the Grammy guest list. The formal invitations go out this month. There's conflict at the Academy as several voting members do not think it would be appropriate to invite Diddy. Some including several high profile African American members fear that inviting him sends the wrong message to audiences and the charities it supports. Several publicists have asked that their artists aren't seated next to him. It's a logistical nightmare. Just so y'all know how bad Diddy's situation is, even his brand. Revolt TV kicked him out as chairman. They released a statement on Instagram saying, Sean Combs has stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt. While Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all black people throughout this country and the African diaspora. They continued, our focus has always been one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of Revolt, one that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team on behalf of advancing, elevating, and championing our culture, and that continues. But when Diddy got sued for a fourth time, more and more brands started to sit up and cut ties with him. It was bad enough that Diddy broke his silence personally for the first time and denied the allegations. He said, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character and destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. But this did nothing to reassure his business partners and after that last lawsuit 18 new companies have parted ways with diddy's e-commerce platform empower global founded by combs in 2021 empower global aims to promote black owned businesses with a digital marketplace that creates opportunities for black entrepreneurs to build and scale successful businesses and for everyone to shop black daily with ease well black brands don't want to be associated with him and they're cutting him off fashion brand house of takura released an announcement that boldly stated that they were cutting diddy off because of the allegations they said we take the allegations against Mr. Combs very seriously and find such behavior abhorrent and intolerable, founder Annette Naju told Rolling Stone. We believe in victims' rights and support victims in speaking their truth, even against the most powerful of people. Shapewear line Nudie System has released a statement from their owner saying, Nudie System is a woman's brand, owned and run by me and my two daughters. We believe women and stand in support of them. Frankly, we are sick of men trying to control our bodies and using their power to harm us. Girl, this situation is messy, and like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how Diddy is going to navigate the change in his finances as well as the pending lawsuit from Osiris. Fans left comments saying, It has been said for years how these big ballers in the industry manipulate young people coming in the industry with a dream and the big boys convince them they can't get up or rich without their connection. But you have to play with me first. Sadistic. I believe, shorty. It's obvious something happened to Osiris that is deeply disgusting and disturbing. He wants out because he is seeing an element of the industry that we as fans don't see. I hope these dark acts continue to get exposed along with the culprits. It's over, Diddy. Go away, go broke, go to jail. 
and Diddy doesn't need jail at this point. He needs to be buried in the ground. Him going broke settling cases is good karma though. This is insane, but do you guys think that Osiris is really gonna go through with a lawsuit? Or do you think Diddy and Drake are gonna team up against him and force him to drop? Also, what do you think about Diddy going broke and losing everything? Drop your thoughts in the comments, then check out this next video.